In this video, we're going to be discussing absolute value functions, what they look like, how to graph them, and how to graph absolute value inequalities as well. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the parent function. Now, parent functions are, it's your equation before you do anything to it. So, the parent function for an absolute value uh, is just absolute value of x. And if you were to graph that, it looks like a V, and on either side we have slope of positive and negative 1, and the vertex, which is your turning point, is at the origin. That's the parent function of an absolute value. So again, it looks like a V. Uh, the domain is all real numbers, because if you look, left and right goes on forever. The range in this case, well the lowest point is here and that is zero on your y-axis so all your other y's are greater than or equal to zero. And this again is the parent function absolute value of x. Now what we're going to look at is, in this video is how to find the vertex and how to graph it using a table. So I'm going to scooch this down a little bit and divide this up real quick. And I'm going to take a couple of absolute value functions. So absolute value of x minus 4. Let's start with a simple one. Whenever you go to graph these, what you want to do is you want to basically find a table. You want to get a table with your x values and your f of x values, which is your input and your output. And I'm just going to do a few lines here. What we need to do first is we need to find what the middle x value is, which is the x of our vertex. So remember, your vertex is your turning point. So what you do is you take what's inside the absolute value, which in this case is x minus 4. You're going to set that equal to 0 and then solve for x. So in this one I add 4 to both sides to get x equals 4. This means the middle x value of our graph is a 4. From there, I number down and up. And then I have to figure out what my y values are be, would be. So when you do this, basically what you want to do is you want to plug these numbers into the equation. So absolute value of x, which for the first one would be 2, minus 4. That would give me positive 2. So 2, 2 is this point. If I were to plug in a 3, I would, get abs I would get 1, because, uh, let me c explain, 2 minus 4 gives me negative 2, but when you take the absolute value so of something, it makes it positive, so that's where I got the positive 2 from. If I were to plug in a 4, I would get 0, and good news is, absolute values are symmetrical, which means if you were to fold it in half, along this line, all your points would match up. So in this case, I don't have to plug in for the rest of them, I just kind of go back up, 1 and 2. And then I'm able to graph it. So I have point 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 5, 1, and 6, 2. I could extend it further out if I wanted to, but that's good enough to graph it. Now, what would happen though if we had a number outside of your absolute value? So let's take, for example, this one. Absolute value of 2x minus 4. Let's take that one. 
you're still going to work uh, do this the same way. You're going to do a table of values, your x and your y. Okay. And we find our middle x value. Same process as before. You take what's inside the absolute value, which in this case is just the 2x, set that equal to 0, and then solve for x. So divide by 2, and I'm going to get x is 0. So that's our middle x value number down and number up from there. Then you plug these x values into the whole equation. So for the first one, absolute value of 2 times x, which for the first one was negative 2, minus 4. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Absolute value of that is positive 4. Subtract 4, and I get 0. For the next one, I have 2 times negative 1, absolute value of that, minus 4. So that's negative 2, absolute value is positive 2, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Plug in a 0. That's 0 minus 4 to get negative 4. And again, I can this is my vertex, so now it's going to start going back up, same amount. So I'm just going to go negative 2 and 0 from there. So I can plot my points, negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 4, and then on the other side, symmetrical, so it just goes back up. Now, domain and range. Looking at domain and range of this one, domain here all real numbers. Let me change colors there for a sec. That's not very visible. Domain is all real numbers. Because it goes left and right forever. It doesn't stop. Your range on this one, though, well, your y's don't go, go below 0 on the y-axis. So they're all greater than or equal to 0. On this one, domain is still all real numbers. But your range is different. On this one, the lowest your y values go is negative 4. So y greater than or equal to negative 4 is your range. Now, let's take one more. Uh, Hmm. Negative absolute value of 3x minus 2. I'm going to set up a table. Okay, same process. So I'm going to start by taking the 3x minus 2, setting it equal to 0, and finding my middle x. I'm going to start by adding 2 to both sides, which gives me 3x equals t positive 2. And when I divide by 3, I get x equals 2 thirds. So 2 thirds is my x value. So when I go to plug these in, my, uh, the next whole number down from 2 thirds is 0 and the negative 1. The next biggest whole number from 2 thirds is 1 and then 2. You are going to have to be careful filling this one in because the way the numbers turn out, it, it's not going to be the same on each side. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start plugging my numbers in. So negative absolute value of 3 times negative 1 minus 2. I do have to be careful on this one because I've got a negative outside the absolute value. So when I do the absolute value part, I get uh, absolute value of negative 5, which is 5. But because of this negative here, it stays negative here. So you do have to be careful if you have a negative on the outside. 
So continuing to plug in my numbers, I'm going to, um, again, you've got to be careful because it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be negative 5 and then negative 2 on that one um, because it's not going uh, between 2 thirds and 0 and then 2 thirds and 1 by the same amount. <clears throat> so when I do this, uh, sorry, I'm trying to talk and do the math at the same time. Let's see, and then 6 minus 2 is, oh, that should be a negative 1, sorry. And then that will be negative um, 4. So when I graph this, negative 1, negative 5, and then 0, negative 2. For the 2 thirds 0, I'm going to have to estimate. 2 thirds is not quite at 1, but almost. So somewhere around right there. And then 1, negative 1, and 2, negative Four. So somewhere around right there, and it still makes a V. But this time it's upside down, which does affect your dom your range. Your domain is still going to be all real numbers, because left and right, your X's go on forever. But your range, I'm sorry, I was writing the wrong, okay. Your range, it doesn't go above this part of the x-axis of the y-axis so your y's are less than or equal to zero now everything I've done here works the same way for an inequality so let's look at a couple of inequalities here let's take a simple one let's take uh, f of x less than absolute value of x plus 1. Okay. So we have our x and y's. Make a table. If I take the x plus 1, set that equal to 0 and solve for x, I'm going to get negative 1 as my middle x value. Go down and up from there and then plug my numbers in. So absolute value of negative 3 plus 1 gives me 2. Absolute value of negative 2 plus 1 gives me 1. Absolute value of negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. And because I've got whole numbers, this is everything is increasing by 1 or decreasing by 1, I can go ahead and just do 1 and 2 over here. If you're not sure whether it does work out that way, you can always double check. But once you have your table filled in, you're going to plot your points. Now, when it's an inequality, you do want to extend your graph out all the way to the edge of the graph because you're going to have to shade. And you want to make sure that you're shading within the correct region. Pay attention to what your inequality symbol is. Remember that if it's less than or greater than, you're going to use a dotted line. If it's or equal to, you're going to use a solid line. Also remember that greater than or greater than equal to, you're going to shade. Um, you're going to shade above the line above the vertex, less than, less than equal to, you shade below the vertex. So this one, it's a dotted line. Okay. And I'm going to be shading below the vertex because it's less than. So I'm shading on this side. Right. So I'm going to do a quick one where I don't really have to worry about the table too much just to show you what um, another one would look like. So let's just take um, absolute value greater than or, uh, let's see, greater than or equal to absolute value of x um, minus 1. Okay. So on this one, again, table of values. Your middle x 
is going to be zero because you take what's inside, set equal to zero, is just going to be zero. So negative one, negative two, and then one and two. Um, fill in my table here. Again, you fill in the table by plugging your x values into there. I just did it real quick so we could finish. Uh, negative two, one. Negative one, zero. Zero, negative one. Uh, let's see. So on this one, you are going to have to do a solid line because it's or equal to. And when I shade, I'm going to sh be shading above because it's greater than. So hit vertex, go above the vertex. That's the side you shade on. So when it's, uh, that's how you graph inequalities or absolute value equations and inequalities using a table.